Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today, as you can guess, I've taken my seats out and no, they are not gonna go back into my car. What I wanted to go through with you is if you're considering bucket seats or if you wanna change your seats at all, um, because quite a lot of people have got in contact with me recently and they wanna take out their standard seats and maybe put in some Porsche tombstones or they wanna put in um, some reclining um, sort of bucket style seats or they just wanna do an upgrade. Now I'm gonna go through everything you need to consider and the things you need to fit them in this video straight after that intro. So, you're considering swapping your seats. Now, there's quite a few things to bear in mind and I wish I'd have done this prior to fitting these. Now, these with a cage are really difficult to fit and I run into a few issues. Don't get me wrong, the fitting was absolutely fine because I've got original runners with a Sparco base mount adjuster, which then allows you to go from rails onto the bottom of the seat. So therefore you can put these seats in any car which is suitable um, for the bracket you've bought. So, Sparco Sprint Ls. These are the slightly wider uh, for the slightly more rotund gentleman. Now I've lost some weight and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the video, but I can put my entire fist down the side here. So it's actually a little bit too big. So I'm sort of rattling about. So you slide around a corner, you'll still slide, which is not what I want. Um, these are actually side and base mount seats. So you have the options of both. Now, there's some, some considerations to be made um, when picking what seat you want. Now, if you're gonna go for say a roadster and you want a single fixed position, or if you're going for a track car, which you're the only person who's gonna be driving, base mount would be absolutely fine because once you've got it into that position, how you want it, like shim it up, put some brackets on, whatever you wanna do. When it's in that fixed position, it's absolutely fine. Now, the only consideration um, to be had there is when you come to sit in the car, if you get in your car and you pull the handle and it drops straight to the bottom, or you like to sort of tilt the front and the back, base mounts are probably not for you because they are only one position, which is the issue I ran into. Now, these seats have quite a pronounced um, like front bolster and it's solid. So. Once you fitted this in the car, because it's quite flat, um, and if you look at most TT seats, they actually slope downwards. So it made driving it actually quite uncomfortable. Half the reason is because I've got short legs. So when you push down, as I'm pushing, imagine I'm pushing this foot down, um, this is actually stopping me, and then it makes it awkward, so you have to sort of put your foot at a funny position. So these, for me, were no good. Um, I didn't like driving it. I drove to, where did we go? Elsa car at the races. And I was, honestly, when I got out, my legs hurt, my back hurt, because it was just in the wrong position. It's awfully upright, which is fine because it's a, a bucket seat. It's made to be supportive. It's quite nice on the shoulders, but I felt it was a little bit too 90 degree, you know, like you sort of were leaning forward because the harnesses were pulling you down and my legs were fouling on the bottom of the seat. So I made the decision to take them out and get something different. Now, that comes with a million different options. When you have side mount seats, you would have been able to change this a little bit because if you've got a side mount, they have a bracket which then allows you to tilt the seat up and down at the front, bring the front down, bring the back up, and it gives you a lot more positions. It will also allow you to mount the seat lower in the car. That was the other problem I was having was the seat was quite high which then reduces the gap between your legs and the steering wheel, which is not particularly a large gap anyway. Um, and if you can imagine, these actually sat a little bit higher with the base mounts than original factory seats. So not ideal um, for me. And it just was a really uncomfortable drive and I hated driving the car because the seating position was not right. You know, you know what it's like, if you get into a car and someone's adjusted your seat, it could take you up to 100 miles, maybe five or 10 times of driving it to get that absolute sweet spot. So what I decided to do was to take these seats out and buy some more. Now, I didn't just buy random seats. I actually, when we went to the Nürburgring last week, I went in Bryn's car, uh, BWSTT, shout out to Bryn. Um, and he had Corbu Club Sport XLs. Now these are large for the more rotund gentlemen. The XLs are not quite as wide. They're XL, but they're not XL at all. Um, so I would recommend sitting in any seat before you buy it and also getting maybe some other people's opinions or being able to sitting in a car 
rather than just um, in a showroom or at someone's house where they're selling them because it will make a bit of a difference. Let me just go and grab the other seats and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so there you have the two different seats. Now you can see what I mean straight away in a few things. So this seat sits a lot lower. Right here is the lowest point and that is probably two inches lower than that seat there. Also, it comes out at a nice angle. So when you're sitting there, your leg doesn't have like a bump where it's like that. Um, it's not at a weird sort of angle where it sort of has to go up and then down again. Um, these have padding in a little bit more than that one. It's actually got pads on the base. You could also probably put a little cheeky bit more in there if you want to do a lot more road miles. Um, they are slightly narrower. Again, they have the same sort of shape as any bucket seat, which would hug you really well. They sit lower. They're quite a lower seat, which means they're less likely to foul on your roll cage. Mine only just touched here and it wasn't really an issue. It was just sort of pressing on the material. Um, and because these are side mount, they give you what I was saying earlier, which is this adjustable. Now these ones haven't got that many holes on because these are slimline ones, but they still have three adjustment points and three adjustment points. So you can adjust it how you want and they are fixed on the mounting. So I'll have to fit them, see if they're right. And then if not, I'll have to move the seat over on the bracket. Now let me jump into this quickly. Oh yeah, see that's much nicer. I'm much lower and I don't have, I can extend my leg out and there's nothing lifting it up. I mean, they're a bit more snug and it, it just feels a lot more comfortable. Now I drove Bryn's car with these seats in and it was absolutely perfect. I will have to adjust the sides just to get the sweet spot. I might have to tip it up at the back a bit or drop it down at the back a bit or vice versa at the front, but I have the ability to do that. Now, price wise, um, these seats cost me, I think they were 350 pound and then another 150, 50 pound on the six point harnesses. What I'm gonna be doing with these, these were 600 quid, so these are obviously twice the price of the seat. Um, but I'm gonna go for some slightly nicer um, harnesses. I'm gonna go for a four point because six is a little overkill, um, especially for, I wanna do a lot of road miles. Um, I'm also gonna go for one of those ones with like a seat belt buckle in the middle. So just a nice easy one because these, all right, they're fine. The, the problem is you've got this in your lap which is pulling up into your crotch area, which is not particularly comfortable. And you've got to put each individual seat belt in. It's just a nightmare. It makes the whole getting in and out thing a right faff. And the other ones are, are perfectly fit for road. These are more for track use. Um, and they literally are combined as one there. And then you just click and that is it. They're, I think you can buy ones that go from three inch to two inch and they stay two inch. So they're just a little bit more comfortable because you can imagine with these, let me take one of these out. These are humongous. So when you put them on, if you're quite slim in the neck, these actually like cut into your neck because they're sort of pulling down at this angle. And you find here, they can be quite uncomfortable. And often I used to wear a jumper and then I just have like the neck up slightly just so that the seatbelt wouldn't cut into your neck. Now, if you're racing, you're in a race suit, they have a slightly higher collar, probably half for that reason, just for the comfort. And uh, obviously you've got a helmet on and whatever. But that is another thing to consider. So, all right, yes, it looks great, but it's not particularly comfortable. Now I wanna get this car to that point where I can just jump in it and do a few hundred miles. Yes, bucket seats are not going to be as comfortable as normal seats, but they offer a substantial amount more support and they're gonna be so much better for track days and fast road use because you'll be able to feel more of the limit of the car. Now, when you turn hard on, um, a leather seat or any normal factory seats, you'll be sliding around and you slide off the seat and you think, oh, I'm gonna lose it, the car's on the edge, when really it's not. It's just because you're slipping on the seat, you don't notice the difference. Now, when you've gone to a bucket seat, you go into a corner at your, your normal speed and you think, oh yeah, that could, I could easily put another 30 mile an hour on that. Um, and it just allows you to feel that bit more. So that's kind of where I am with the seats. Um, if you're looking to put in um, some bucket seats, I will put some, some details down in the description for things like um, base mounts because you can buy from Boost Fabrications, OMP and other companies like that. You can buy a plate which bolts to the four points on the floor and that's just a, a metal sheet. And then you can either mount runners or you can mount the side mount straight onto that. And that will give you the lowest fitment that you could possibly have. 
um, and then that'll allow you to build up from there. So you can add, um, I'll put also down in the description for some runners, you can buy universal runners um, for about 25 or 30 pounds to then allow you um, to make them suitable for different drivers if you have more than one driver of the car or if you have a passenger and you wanna be able to um, extend and shorten that. So there's, there's loads of options available. Um, I'll throw up a couple of pictures of seats I've seen fitted. Certain seats fit straight in, certain other seats, like I said, you require this bracket. Um, the bracket is good for base mount and for side mount because you can obviously um, fit the bracket, then lay the seat in and draw the holes where they need to be, or you can mount it to the seat, then put the seat in the car with the bracket on. Um, it kind of allows for all fitments. Um, so it's quite a cool thing. I'm going to wait until I've got some harnesses to get these seats fitted because obviously I'm going to have to um, fit them around the cage. I also need to put some fitting points um, for the seatbelts or use the existing seatbelt points um, to fabricate those on because these um, rails don't have a seatbelt point. Whereas these had an eyelet just on the side here, um, which you get your, your harness on and then you can click it on as a mounting point. Now, because that's bolted where the seat is bolted to the car, if it's strong enough to hold the seat, it's strong enough to hold the belt. And that's another thing, actually one more thing to consider then is when you're fitting seats in a car, if they don't have a buckle or the buckle's wrong for your normal factory seat belt, or you wanna retain them like in a, a Quattro Sport and that kind of thing, um, you can mount your seat belt to the base plate. Just make sure you use the right size bolt make sure you get a decent fixing because at the end of the day, if that rips out, you've got no seatbelt. So do bear that in mind. And a lot of people, when they fit the bucket seats, they think they sort of forget about the seatbelt because the seatbelt on a factory seat is mounted to the runner. So as soon as you take your factory seats out, you have no buckle. So you will need to add that on if you want to keep your original fastening and a normal seatbelt um, for your day-to-day -day use. Now, I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found it interesting. Hope maybe you've learned something today, you never know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that is where I am with the seats. I am so much happier and I think you'll be able to see the difference as to why. I mean, the height difference is one thing because look how much lower the seat belts mount. That's probably five or six inches. So I'm quite a lot lower. If you can imagine the difference that my head's not even as high as that seat and in that seat, my head was slightly above. So it's definitely gonna mount completely differently in the car and I'm really looking forward to getting these in. I just need to get some seat belts sorted and we have got loads and loads coming up with the Noggy. I have got a right plan sorted out and I'll be dropping that video next week and it is not one to miss. I don't think you would quite guess what I've got planned. Feel free to, um, to put it down in the comments what you think I've got planned for the Noggy. Now, of course, yes, I'm gonna be making some changes to the power and all that kind of stuff, but it's also taking into consideration some of my existing fleet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You'll have to wait till next week. Until next time, guys. Bye for now.